factors that affect birth rates. One, we have early marriage. In many communities in the developing nations or Islamic regions especially, people encourage early marriage and this gives increase. This gives give rise to increase in population as many children being given birth to. Also, we have desire for large families. In most communities in developing nations as well, people tend to have many wives so as to have many children as this place them in special class in the society and give them better ground as the residents of that particular uh, society. Also, we have religious belief. Religious belief also is part of the uh, factor that contributes to birth rates. Religious belief of certain uh, 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 community such as Christianity discourage, discourages polygamous family. Others like Islam encourages marrying more than one wife. So in such case, religious factor is another one. Then we have improved medical service. As a result of improved medical service in a particular area, death rate is bound to be reduced because people have access to a very good medical service. Then we have government aid. Where the government increases the aid it gives to people, families are encouraged to have more children, thereby increasing the population. We have improved standard of living. This also encourages men to marry more wives in favorable communities, thereby birth rates will be increasing. Those are the factors that uh, 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 determine the level of the birth rates in a particular society. Now let's consider death rates as another factor. Death rate is also known as mortality rate. It refers to the rate at which people, both young and adult, die in a country. Generally, death, high death rate leads to population decrease or low population, while low death rate leads to increase in population. What are the factors that are responsible for the death rate in a particular society? One, we have the ratio of male to female. In any society where there are more males than female, there will be low childbearing rates in such a society, and therefore the population will be reducing. Second, we have poor medical service. When there is no proper and good medical service in a society, you discover that the death rates will be increasing because people don't have access to medical service. Also, we have high rate of mortality, infant mortality. High rate of infant mortality leads to decrease in population, especially in a society where there is a kind of outbreak of one disease or the other, it can lead to the death of the young ones at that early stage. Now, number four, we have poverty. High level of poverty among people leads to high death rate. As such, many people Many people that may not have uh, enough means of taking care of their families and their relations. Then we have natural disaster. Natural disaster like earthquake, flooding can as well lead to the rates of death in a particular society. And lastly, we have man-made disaster. This occurrence of man-made disaster like war, conflict, pollution, etc. is capable of leading to the high death rate of a particular society uh, over a period of time. Now, another factor is migration. This is the movement of people from one geographical area to another, informing permanent or temporary resident or settlement. In migration, the region where, pe where people are living is called the source region, while the region where people are entering or mo moving into is called receiving or destination region. We have two major types of migration. One, we have emigration, which is the type of migration in which people leaving their own country, that is, they are moving out of their own country to another country. The second one is immigration, which is the type of migration whereby people moving from another country into uh, the own country, in particular country. Then, what are the forms of migration? We have rural urban migration. Rural urban migration is the movement of people from rural area to urban area, like moving from villages to cities. Two, we have rural to rural 
migration. Rural to rural migration is the movement of people from one rural area to another rural area. Maybe because of one resources or one advantages in another rural area, people tend to move away into that better rural area. Today, we have urban to rural migration. This is the movement of people from one urban center to rural area, especially the missionaries, or for creating establishment whereby the, uh, the resources they need, possibly they are available in one rural area or the other, and they need to move closer to it in order to assess the resources. Four, we have urban to urban migration. This is the movement of people from one urban center to another, maybe in search of one better opportunity or the other. Then, number five, we have international migration, which is the movement of people from one country into another from one country into another country. And the last one, we have seasonal migration. And seasonal migration is the movement of people from one place to another at a particular session, at a particular season of the year, maybe going abroad during summer or during Christmas, moving from one place to the other. Such a movement is referred to as seasonal migration. Factors affecting migration. Number one, we have natural disaster such as flood, famines, drought, earthquake, earthquake, and so on, could be could make people to migrate from one place to another. Second one, we have physical conditions such as climate, soil, relief, may also be responsible for the movement of people from one place to the another, especially where. Uh, such a climatic condition is not favorable to them. They tend to move from that place to another place. Another factor is insecurity. Fear of insecurity arising from war or political instabi uh, instability will also make people to migrate from one place to the other. Also, we have differences in economic opportunities. As a result of this, people tend to migrate to where there are more economic opportunities like jobs, and business transactions in order to get better opportunities. Then we have change in status. Changes in status such as high level of education and wealth will make people to migrate from one place to the other, especially from my rural area to urban center. Then we have differences in social amenities. Owing to differences in social amenities available in particular area to the other, such as water, such as good roads, such as stable electricity, and so on. People tend to move from one place to the other, especially where they are living. It's not that favorable to them and comfortable. They tend to move to uh, better places. Now, what are the advantages of migration? Number one, it reduces population pressure on agricultural land at the source region. Remember, the source region is where people are migrating, they are moving away from. That is source region. Two, it reduces population pressure on social amenities at the source region as well. Three, it supplies migrant labor at the receiving region. That is, there will be more laborers at the receiving region. Four, it ensures the flow of capital to the receiving region. Where people are going to, there is a kind of flow of capital into such a region because there will be more focus of the government or on that uh, particular uh, society at that time. Five, it leads to the development of social amenities at the receiving region. There is possibility of social amenities increasing in such uh, places. Six, it boosts markets at the receiving region because the population at the receiving region will be increasing and in that case, people will continue to transact and the markets will be expanding in such a receiving region. Seventh, it promotes cultural integration. People from different cultures coming together at a particular region, the receiving region, that will make, uh, encourage them to mix, uh, to mix together and to uh, know each other's uh, cultural uh, belief and trait in their midst. Now, what are the disadvantages? Disadvantages of migration, one, it breeds social vices like crime and drug dealings at the receiving 
region. Because wherever people are, are, are overpopulated, wherever people are merged, the, 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 the probability of crime in such a society will be increasing. Two, it will increase high cost of living at the receiving region because people will begin to look for more resources to use at that particular places and for example if you look at uh, some other bigger cities you discover that their uh, cost of living in such society is very high that is another disadvantage of uh, migration three it leads to pressure on social amenities at the receiving region the available social amenities at the receiving region will not be enough again to satisfy the uh, people living in that society. Number four, it leads to the loss of able-bodied men and youths at the source region. The region, the society where people are moving away from, in that case, people are, I mean, the society will be losing the able-bodied men in such uh, society because people are moving to a better places and the other places is becoming desolate gradually. Number five, it leads to congestion in housing and transportation at the receiving region. Wherever there is a high population, overpopulation, definitely the transportation and housing in such environments will be congested. Six, it leads to decline in production at the source region. The level of production at the region, at the, in the society where people are moving away from, will be reducing in such situation. And the last one, it leads to cultural disintegration at the destination.